W-R-O-I, and we welcome to the studio CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, John Alley. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So, are you ready for Christmas? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Have you done Nobody's it? ever truly ready. Well, yeah, this is true. Uh, real quickly, the people that have to work at Woodlawn on Christmas Day want to thank them. Yes, they uh, they go above and beyond that yeah. extra dedication to make sure that we still continue to provide the service that the folks need in this community. Because I have known people who do such things. Uh, Halloween may be the strangest night of the year, but Christmas Eve can be one of the weirdest nights of the year. Yes, uh, I think New Year's <laughs> falls in there. New Year's, New Year's Eve falls in there a little bit, too. But, uh, yeah, we have kind of three, uh, three unique days that, uh, exactly. you know, it's compare notes the day yeah. after. I didn't know you weren't supposed to do that with it. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So, how are things going at Woodlawn? And uh, you had a board meeting, right? I had a board meeting yesterday. So, it was kind of the last, uh, you know, last one of the year as we're transition into 2019 so it's just kind of some cleanup stuff and uh you know updates what we've been doing what we're looking forward to next year we had tasha linville who's our director of our central billing office come in and for several years the physician practices have had to operate on two separate computer systems so you'd come in and we'd have to register you twice to make sure everything worked just went through uh, uh she called it the hell week of doing that conversion of moving it to one system so it's going to be a much easier for the staff and for the patient a little quicker through that registration process so they had about 10 days where uh, they were trying to get all these files converted from the old system to the new and i think today they're fine tuning it a little bit so hopefully by the first of the year we come january 1 Everything's on going to be the new system, and it's going to be much more convenient for the staff and for the patients as they come in. And, of course, when you get a new system like that, you're not just going someplace and buying the newest edition of Quicken. This is a specific system, and you have to meet certain, I suppose, Correct. anyway, regulations or whatever. For right. What you have to meet all the Medicare, Medicare regulations, Medicaid regulations. Pick a, uh, an acronym. They have their own regulations we have to meet. So it's it's very time-consuming to go through that. And just the file building, because it's very complicated. Each insurance company has its own way it wants a bill submitted to them. So, you know, if we've got right now probably 350 separate insurance plans that we deal with, because even like, the way you just do Anthem. Well, Anthem might have 150 different plans under their uh, umbrella. So each one of those has a different requirement on how we have to send a bill in. So what they do, that file building is, okay, Anthem number one, this way, number two, and just work they, their way through every one of the different insurance plans we have. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, you know, it's kind of nice to do it every now and then because you go back and say, oh, we can make, you know, we've missed this or make things a little better. But uh, staff's done a phenomenal job. They've been working some 12 and 14 hour days just to try to get this all done. So I think the the light at the end of the tunnel is not the train coming at them. It's actually the light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, today and tomorrow, we hope they get that wrapped up and uh, be ready for the first of the year. Excellent. The other thing that uh, we've been working on for quite some time now is uh, there's a designation within the, the federal government and the state gives us if you're a health professional shortage area, which means quite a bit to a county. July 1 of this year, state of Indiana and, and the federal government designated Fulton County as a health professional shortage area, which basically means that based on the population, there's X number of physicians that there should be in the community, and we don't have that. So that really helps us because now by be getting that designation, we can convert our uh, physician offices to what we call rural health clinics. And that's additional reimbursement. So, you know, I'll just pick a number. If we used to get paid for a Medicaid or a Medicare patient $20, we might get $30 or $35 now because it helps offset the cost to trying to recruit physicians into the community. So that's going to be a fairly big thing for us. It's going to take about a year to get that done. Uh, the application process takes about a year. So we've got that started, and we'll be moving forward with it. The secondary benefit of being a health professional shortage area is if physician coming out of medical school, if they agree to work in a, they call them HIPSAs, health professional shortage area, for three to five years, federal government will wipe out their student loans. So it's a very nice recruiting tool for the hospital to bring doctors to the community. And, uh, you know, we've got Dr. Hayes had retired. We have some other physicians. Probably in the next three to five years, we'll be looking for retirement. So that's going to really help us 
bring in some of the you know new physicians fresh out of medical school into this area because they're going to come out basically debt free if they come into Fulton County. So very nice tool from a, a hospital perspective for that recruiting. Looking forward to get that all done in uh, you know mid next year. Hopefully have a couple physicians that we can get into some of the medical schools and sign them up now. Maybe a couple years from now when they graduate, they'll come to our community and be in place, ready to go as we see some of our other physicians think about retirement. Finally, we got into the revenue and the, the financials for the month. Uh, for the month of uh, November, we had $12.7 million in gross billings. We wrote off 7.7, so we're still right in that 60% range. So this is operating revenue of uh, just a tad over $5 million. Uh, we had operating expenses at $5.1 million. We had some non-operating revenue, which is just from things that we classify as not directly related to patient care, of 306000 So for the month of uh, November, we had $153,000 profit. So anytime we can get that number on the black side, not on the red side, we like that. So uh, looking good for December. I think we'll probably show another positive month for December. Hopefully finish out the year fairly strong on a positive note. Yeah, and you're a nonprofit organization, so it's not like, you know, a bunch of shareholders are going to say, Correct. where's my dividend check or anything like that. Right. Which some hospitals are. I mean, they Correct. Are. There's, uh, there seems to be more of them now on that side, what we call the for-profit side, than the not-for-profit. Now, um, a lot of news made in the last week. I think it was a uh, judge, I believe in Texas, I'm not sure, uh, said the ACA was unconstitutional. And, of course... Anytime somebody asks the question, the answer, correct answer always is, well, I don't know because I don't know what they're going to do to replace it. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, if it just goes away, would that affect Woodlawn at all? It would affect us, yes, because what would happen then, a lot of the folks who do have coverage now, would, you know, if they deem that to be unconstitutional, then that coverage would, would cease. So now we would go back to those folks who do have some sort of insurance to be uninsured. And uh, we, we know health care is very, very expensive. You know, it, it's just uh, the nature of the beast, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, with insurance, that does help pay that bill a little bit. So we do get some, you know, co uh, cover our costs to see those patients. Lots of times, if they're truly self-pay, they don't have the means to pay that bill. So that would reduce our ability to generate cash to put back into the facility for improvements and, and as we move forward. And I'm assuming if they're self-pay, then they put things off until it becomes a lot more expensive than it would. Yes. And, of course, if you don't have any money, $1 is the same as 1000 But Correct. I'm, I, I'm assuming things get more expensive as we go along. We do find a lot of the, the folks are very conscious of the cost of health care, and they'll come in and say, well, you know, I've put this off as long as I can, but I just can't afford it. You know, I think I'd much rather you come in early. Let's get some preventative medicine yeah. going, you know, and let's get, you know, if you have high blood pressure or diabetes, let's start treating that early on before it gets to that point where all of a sudden you're in the back of an ambulance being transported to the hospital, because at that point it's very serious, and, you know, you've you've reduce your quality of life by putting that off so you know i it's hard for me to say this but don't worry about the cost we're going to treat you we don't care if you need medical attention come see us you know that's all we ask just come see us we can work the rest of it out and uh you know that's that's our job to treat the patients in fulton county and around us now you know if you do have the means to pay your bill We'd like for you to do that. But if that's the case, if you're preventing medical care because you can't afford it, stop. Come see us. We got it. We get you early. I'd much rather see you where we can give you a couple prescriptions for your high blood pressure than wait a year later and all of a sudden now you're needing a major surgery because of the high blood pressure. So right. please come see us. Don't worry about the cost. We'll work it out some way. Now, this is probably an unfair question, but I've been wanting to ask you about this. Uh, we've seen some scary headlines over the last several months about the cost of insulin for diabetics. And I don't know how much that is a scare headline because there's a lot more medications than just straight up insulin that they give to people to treat diabetes, right? Correct. The, the cost of drugs is a unique problem. Um, the drug that we bought this year for maybe $20, next year is going to be 200 and we have no control over that. I mean, we're at the mercy of basically the drug manufacturers and the distributors. So, you know, that's a, that's an issue we have sometimes. And we have some of our oncology patients, you know, their drug might be six to $7,000 a dose, and they need five, six times a month. Now, it's astronomical, the cost of some of these drugs. Some of the, the uh, drug companies have plans where we can... Uh, 
ask them to help with the cost of that. The patient would apply. We attest that they are getting the drugs at our facility. And sometimes they'll get that at either low cost or no cost. But it's a constant battle fighting those, trying to find those programs where we can get those folks the drugs that they need. But, uh, yeah, it's it's surprising how they fluctuate from time to time. And, you know, the simple thing uh, from us is the hurricane we had a couple years ago. Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Most all the drug supplies and were stored. That's where their warehouses were. So all of a sudden, we had massive shortages. Once the demand is up and the supply is down, price skyrockets. And, you know, IV bags, which is a simple product, yeah. you know, went up four, five, six hundred percent overnight. Uh, so if those are the type of things, you know, it makes it difficult in healthcare that... Didn't you to, have to get special permission or something to get some supplies from Europe? There were or? some that came in from Europe. The FDA uh, actually cleared a European manufacturer to help fill that backlog that... Because uh, uh, there's just no way we could get us or anybody else what we needed. So, yes, the FDA did open up some, uh, you know, European companies to bring in. But, again, it's from a, a business perspective, it's hard to manage your costs when you don't know what they're going to be tomorrow. Right. And, uh, you know, people say, well, healthcare is expensive. Yeah. We, we just don't know what our costs are going to be. And, again, as we look at, uh, you know, we talked earlier about the financials. Right now, for every dollar we bill, we write off 60 cents through either, you know, the folks who can't pay or the insurance companies say, we're not going to pay you, you know, 40 cents on the dollar, 50 cents on the dollar, and we're at their mercy. We can try to negotiate a, a new contract, but they're basically in the driver's seat. Right. So we're, whatever they tell us the contract's going to be, we kind of have to accept it because they just say, that's fine, and we won't put you in network. Then that puts the patient at risk because now if you come to Woodlawn, you're out of network, and you don't want to do that because that's, again, higher cost. So we, you know, we constantly try to work with the insurance providers to give us a reasonable contract, and uh, at one point uh, we had negotiated with uh, Anthem for seven years to, to finally get a contract. So it, it's not just a, a simple process, uh, but that's you know that's part of the job. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have good folks out there that we constantly are looking at our contracts, make sure we're in compliance, working with the insurance companies to you know can we get things covered. Right now, there's a, a lot where we have to call pre-certification. So if you come in for a test. We can't run that test. We have to call your insurance company and allow us to do that. Sometimes, you know, and folks have a hard time understanding, it might take seven days for us to get that approval back from your insurance companies. Others, we might get it in an hour. So, you know, we, we talk to them and say, well, it's going to be a few days before we get that scheduled. You know, they get upset with us, think it's us. Really, we're fighting their insurance company because of the fact that we cannot get that pre-certification. So it's it's a we're getting ready to start a, a full department uh, that just handles pre-certs now. It's getting to be that important for us. Now we're coming up on the end of the year. In fact, we won't talk to you again until next year, at least in these circumstances. Do we have any projects, capital projects, or anything else we have coming a up few this year? Upgrades that we want to do. Um, you know, the IV pumps in the hospital, everything has a useful life. And we're starting to get to the end of that useful life on the IV pumps. So we're going to be looking at those and, and probably doing an upgrade to them in the first quarter. Uh, some building maintenance, our chiller, which keeps the building cool during the summer months, is pretty well at its end of life. We I think we've repaired it about all that we can. So that's going to be another fairly major expenditure. And then the, the monitors that's in the room. So when you come in, for you know, we hook you up to every wire we can think of. We try to put on you and uh, monitor a little bit of everything. Again, those are starting to get in. They're usually good five to seven years. I think the current ones we have now, we've had nine years. So we've gotten our money's worth out of those. It's time now to update those. So that's probably the three biggest things we're going to look first six months, try to get those three items through that capital process, get them in place and operational. It's probably been five or six years since I was in a hospital room. Are we still using the old-fashioned tube monitors, or is everything flat screen? Everything's like your TV flat is. screens now. I kind of figured Yeah. That. Baron, we don't crank them up anymore. Oh, come on. Okay. I, I know you're, you're, you know, you're getting up there in years, but uh, yeah, everything's flat screens now. Uh, and it's getting, you know, it's basically state of the art. There are many computers, basically, that we're yeah. putting in the rooms now. And they can monitor a far more array of body functions that we could never thought of 15 years ago. So it's kind of nice to see some of the new stuff, you know. Even though I'm in it every day, every now and then I still have to say, wow. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I, I didn't know it could do that. Yeah. So it's kind of it's interesting. Again, John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Do we have anything else we need to go over? That's about all I've got. It's kind of a short meeting. All righty. Well, then, we thank you kindly and wish you and everybody at Woodlawn a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And 
Thank you for doing what you do. Yeah, and same you know, from us, uh, with the holidays coming up, folks, be careful. You celebrate sense. responsibly. So, but yes, we don't want to see you by accident. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just use common sense while you're driving. All righty then. John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. It is now 1048 and 92.1 WROI. From their house to yours.